All right, now, um, Jeremiah's connection. Jeremiah's, uh, Jeremiah's connection with uh, the Tisha B'Av, his name is like, so it's t Tisha, the Tisha B'Av is the um, commemoration of the, it's a, it's a time of lamentation, actually. It's a time of, um, you know, deep, uh, deep thought and, and contrition among um, Hebrews and, and Orthodox Jews. Um, concerning the destruction of the first and uh, second um, temple, Solomon's temple, and even Herod's temple in 70 A.D. And we know that 70 A.D. is very important to us as Ethiopian Hebrews um, with the testimony of the, the Jews being a race of the Ethiopians that Tacitus and others testified to, that connection with um, some of the remnant who was able to flee um, out of uh, Judea, and some had already fled from before. They were in Egypt and in parts of Nubia and, and the Meroe kingdom. Some had reached Ethiopia. Some went further further south and became parts of like the Abayuda and the Abayuda, um, um tribes. Others moved uh, to regions like Nigeria. Um, and became the Yoruba. Some of the some of the Yoruba people admit that they are Hebrews. Um, they are from that region. Although you have a pushback from some of the non-Shemitic Africans, the the, the more um, fanatical um, Hamites or really Canaanite Africans, um, the merchant Africans. They're part of those who sold our people. Um, so the Shemites. See, the, the Shemites and the Kamites both were black. And see, this makes the, the true story very much more interesting and even more complicated um, when you compare it to the whitewashed perversion of lies that we've been told. But now Jeremiah's connection, namely to the, um, this particular time that we know as the Tisha B'Av, because our reason for going there is that we're still touching on, this is another part, appendix, I guess you would, would call it, to the teaching on the Baruch, or the blessing. And we was in um, Deuteronomy chapter 6, and we was at the, the point of uh, verse 20, 21, and um, going into verse uh, uh, 22, where when our children would ask us, our son. You understand that our sons and daughters will ask, what's the meaning of the commandments, the statutes, and the testimonies, these three? What's the meaning of, 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 of this, um, this, 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 uh, this trinity of law, testimonies, and, and, and statutes, or commandments, uh, commandments, testimonies, and statutes, that we would say that we were pharaohs, the evil pharaohs. Not all the pharaohs were evil, mind you. But this particular pharaoh, being the pharaoh of that particular mythos, if you if you can understand it from the Purt Im Harui, you understand, um, we were pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt, Egypt of the underworld, the lower world, and Yahweh brought us out of Egypt, Purt Im Harui, you understand, and the coming forth by day out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Now we've touched on the hand being that right hand and even the glyph in the Ethiopic, and even the Hebrew, the Hebrew glyph as well, or the squared Ezra Babylonian Hebrew, you understand? And you still see it's a right hand. It's, it's, it's a hand symbol, and in the good is it's called the Yemen. And it's like that black power fist. What's so interesting is it, it connects directly with that black power fist. That's the mighty hand. But it's not just a physical, physical level militarist, militaristic sort of idea, a concept that's devoid of spirituality, but there's a core spiritual idea. And you understand why a lot of the black movements failed is because they made a disconnection, you understand, between the army aspect, you understand, and the spiritual, you, you could say the spiritual core and the spiritual center. You understand the spiritual core and the spiritual center. And this is why many of them um, 
ended up the, the, the way that they did. Yes, a lot of evil was done against those black brothers and sisters, but many of them were not, they were not squaring with Yahweh's purpose. You understand, from, from that day, and that was 40 years ago. So now we're at a point in the Torah scroll reading, as we're going into Devarim, Devarim, as we're going into the book of Orit Zeh Dagim, or, or Deuteronomy, we are seeing that 40 years had passed. Almost all of those from that other generation had perished in the wilderness. And from Elijah Muhammad, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, we know we're in the wilderness of North America. So we're really in the wilderness right now. You understand? We came from a sort of level of, of chattel slavery. You understand? To be a, a relative state of freedom to our virtual Goshens. You understand? And, and some of us got to the wilderness, but we have failed to enter in because we're not in the prescribed order, you understand, of the Kalakidan, of the Benai Barit, you understand, of, of the covenant, of, of, of the word agreement. There's an ancient word, you understand, that's being fulfilled upon us, upon the lost sheep, even though this word is in a cursed state because of their ignorance and disobedience. You know, and they're following in the ways of their disobedient ancestors that got us into this very situation to begin with. But as we now be born again, and as we come into the realignment with Rastafari revelation of the King of Kings and his Christ, and recognize our Ethiopian Hebrew identity, and recognize the curse of disobedience and who we are, see, the identity is very important, then we are now in the position and we're coming into the position of, of what the scripture says right here about how the Israelites were told to tell their children, their sons, that they were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt and Yahweh brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. He brought us out of Egypt with Yah, you understand, with that right hand, that right hand of, 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 of might, that right hand of strength and Yahweh showed signs and wonders great and sore upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh and upon all his household before our eyes. And he brought us from thence that he might bring us in to give us the land which he swore to our fathers. So he already had made this promise. So there's already generations that this this word was made. Now some people could have thought that, oh well, even if that was true then, it's not true now because a lot of time has passed. That's how many black folks think right now. And even though this America is like the Titanic right now, with the whole debt crisis, a man-made crisis, but it, 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 it has its own relativity to this, this, um, this Babylon, you understand, this mystery Babylon, Yovas, and should it happen the way it really seems to be going. It's only those who are awake and aware who recognize that Yahweh is bringing us out of this. You understand? All these other things, and I know a lot of people have lost a lot of stuff, and, and people's economic, financial situations are vastly different. But, but you should recognize that Yahweh is showing you a sign. You understand? He's showing you a sign. See how much faith people have you understand, in Babylon, and, and, and America can't even pay its, its debts. You see, this is the delusion of the Gentiles. You understand, this is the delusion of the Gentiles, and the reason why Babylon is losing its prestige is because it no longer has the Beta Israel as its bondmen in the way that they had us before. You see, in the way they had us before. But there are some who want to go back down and go down into Egypt, you understand, just like um, the, the Israelites, and, and you know, we, we've touched on that as well. But here's what we will say to our children. And it says that, um, and Yahweh, verse 24, commanded us, I and I, to do all these statutes, to fear or to reverence Yahweh Eloheinu for our good always, for our good, to reverence him. That means have a reverential trust of him and a hatred for what he regards as evil. In other words, a, a repulsion, you understand, to that which he regards as evil. You understand, this is the true Hebraic meaning of, 
of fear in the sense of reverence. It was not a trembling in fear like like the Babylonians make believe because they're liars. You understand? They are liars. Hath not God said? The serpent said they are liars. You see what I'm saying? So we are not to be like Eve, you understand, but be more like this thing of Mariam that said, like, um, um, be it according to your word, that we say in our prayer, the prayer that even Mary taught us, you understand, is this thing of Mariam that taught us is, be it unto you, be it unto me according to your word. According to your word. She didn't know how these things would be done. She did not know a man. She wasn't intimate with any man. She didn't know how this would be done that she would conceive and bring forth. But she, she did not doubt, like, like um, I think it was, what, her uncle, uh, like Zacharias, had doubted and, and, and was, what, what was it, dumb? He, 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 he was dumb for until the, the child was born, until Johannes, John, was born. Because he had doubted while he was serving as a priest in priestly capacity and was that chief head of his household family, if not clan. When the angel revealed to him that he, his wife would give birth to a, 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 a son and that son would have an important role to play in and amongst the Beta Israel, he, he needed some sign. So we're not a generation that looks for a sign, but we have to recognize the signs he's already showed us. You know what I'm saying? And to reason, is this a sign that he's showing us? You know, so that iron sharp and iron. So we are to do, you understand, all these statutes. You know what I'm saying? These are like our holy days, both the annual Sabbaths as well as the weekly Sabbaths, beginning with the weekly and progressing to the annual Sabbath, these are his statutes to reverence Yahweh Eloheinu, to have a trust, a reverential trust in him, coupled with a hatred and a repulsion to what he views or regards as evil. So what he hates, we hate. You understand? What he dislikes, we dislike. You understand? Even if we don't know exactly why we should dislike it, we should understand that, that Abba knows best. You understand? And pray and ask him to show us, why, well, why is that? You say don't do that, so I won't do it. But I'm just curious, if you will, why is that so? If you pray for wisdom and have faith, you understand, and have amen and imnet, you will receive. You understand? Ask, seek, knock, and the door will be open. And that door is Christos, that door is Christ. So it says, for our good always, that he might preserve us alive that he might preserve us. He is the one that preserves us. We may try to protect ourselves, try to do good for ourselves, but it's he who sustains us. It's he who keeps us alive. You know what I'm saying? He will preserve us alive as it is this day. This is also a prayer. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before Yahweh Eloheinu as he commanded us. Now, in the Moshiach, in Jesus Christos, we learn that the Hebrews and the Ayus, the Ayhuds and the Judahites did not attain to that righteousness because they did not do what they did, ritualize, they did not do it with imnet, with subjective faith in the Amen. They did not do it with faith, you understand, true and faithful witness. They did it, you understand, for many different reasons, but most of all, not because of a not in faith, you understand, and not in faith. And the demonstration of that was the betrayal of the Moshiach, you understand, the betrayal of Yehoshua, Yeshua. Baruch Ante. Antenne, Baruch Antenne. Mm. Abitu, Abitu. So, now at the point of the Jeremiah connection, we said we just will touch on that. You remember what we were saying in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6? In Deuteronomy chapter 6, where the great commandment, is something called the great commandment in verses 4 and 5. And this is the real key. Shema'ah. 
Yisrael, Yahweh, Eloheinu, Yahweh, Ahad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, Ahadu. Yes, he is the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, but he is one. The Sama'ab, or Wali, or Memphis, Kedus, Ahadu, Amla. The word Ahadu and the word Ahad is one and the same. And then we have Ehud, Ehud. Ehud is Sunday, the first day, because Kedame, Saturday, is the seventh day. So when we look at it, it's all in divine order. You understand for I and I as Judeo-Christians and as Ethiopian Hebrews. Hmm. Now, Jeremiah is important because Jeremiah has a prophetic word. Mm. And Je Jeremiah, or Remy, who's known as Remy the Weeper, Remy the Weeper, um, our brother in, uh, late brother in uh, Gerald Macy, he touches on this, and if you're guided by the, the Memphis Caduce, the Holy Spirit, you understand? If you pray for the wisdom, you will see the connection in what he's saying. It is not to say, as people believe, that Gerald Macy was like a, some call him an anti Semite, uh, some call him a diffusionist. They call him all sorts of names. And most of the people who call him that are trying to defend white supremacy. Gerald Macy, like John Brown, and, uh, and a few other white men or Europeans, Anglo-Americans or Anglo, Anglo, um, British, um, and other Anglo-Europeans. A few of them were true men. They were true men because they recognized truth, even in the face of a lot of, of, of adversity, of ridicule and scorn. They recognized the truth and they spoke on it. And in particular, we're looking at these men as great men because they spoke on behalf of the truth of the lost sheep, of the black sheep of the family, you understand, of black people. They spoke to that truth. And why many folks may may discourage you from studying Gerald Macy's works chiefly is because they don't want to recognize or or accept the fact that what Gerald, Gerald Macy's biggest offense to them was that he said it all came out of Africa. And we have to look at the black man as, 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 as a template of this, of many of our European customs and, and, and religion. And a lot of these things have been so woefully perverted from their original context. And if we were to understand ancient Egypt, he said we have to understand ancient Ethiopia. If we were to understand the Jews and true Judaism and Christianity, we would have to understand that this came out of Egypt. And before it was in Egypt, it was in Ethiopia and, and Tobia. Or, or the Kept, you understand, the Kush, it w was at the root of it. And even the Bible shows us that as well. But mm, ignorance, error, and envy have caused many to stumble on that truth. That, 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 that has become as a rock of offense to many, unfortunately. The most we can do is pray that the Almighty will heal them and be on our guard against them, you understand, so that they, they do not offend. They do not cross our path. They do not stop us on and in the way, the truth, and the life. If they stay astray and we stay on the way, then, you know, we stay, we stay travelers. You know, we keep travailing and traveling. And like pedestrians, we pass, be pedestrians in Babylon. be passers by. You understand? But if they try to oppose us in the way, then truly it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a holy war for the king of kings and his Christ's sake. But chiefly it's a spiritual warfare, firstly and foremostly. The spirit, spirituality, true spirituality. This is what we as black folks, being spiritual people, you understand, and doing every religion in a sense, every kind of thing, every, anything we do, we do it more so than everybody else. But one thing we have not tried is our Hebrew identity. We have not tried our so-called uh, Jewishness, our black Jewishness, our Ethiopian Hebrewness. You understand? We haven't tried Jah's way. But here's what's interesting. 
is that you'll find many places in the Old Testament where it'll speak about, such as it does here in Deuteronomy chapter 6 at verse um, 20 and 21, when our son would ask in time to come, what meaneth these testimonies and statutes and judgments which Yahweh Eloheinu have commanded you? And we're to answer about what happened to our ancestors in, in, in Pharaoh, in the evil Pharaohs, um, um, Egypt, the Egypt, the Kabata of the underworld, you understand? Or we could say even the Kabasha, the Habasha of the underworld. What happened to us in that abyss? What happened to us in that darkness when, when the knowledge of Yahweh faded away and people reverted to, to the, most, the, most, the most wicked abominations? You know what I'm saying? When the light of God left the place, we can see it in a simile, a misale in a sense, when we look at Ethiopia, for example. You understand the godless and the creeping coup, the great transgression, the rebellion against the king of kings, that denial of that 3,000-year-old um, um, al-Kidan, that covenant. We, we, we can see what has, has happened. You know, saying not just to Ethiopia, but to that whole region. So Ethiopia is the missing link. It's the missing link in the, the Hebraic, the Judaic, the Christian, the prophetic story. But it says in Jeremiah now, chapter 16, verses 14 and 15, it says something very interesting, verses 14 and 15. And we want to connect this with... Um, um, the out of Egypt, because it says here in verse 14, it says, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, saith the sustainer, Yahweh, Baruch Hu, that it shall no more be said, Yahai, 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 Jalib, Jalib, that brought up the children of Israel, the Bane Yisrael, the Kik Israel, Israel the Judge Malet, out of the land of Egypt. So here in Jeremiah 16, verse 14, is, is something very, very interesting. You've got to highlight it and note this right here. Because Bamarinya says, Sulezih, no. Israel the Judge, Kagibit, Midar, Yawet, Yaw, Ekiziabiharin. Dagmenya Yamai Balabeta Zemin Yimetal Yilal Egiziavi Her. That behold, look and see, therefore look and see, look and sight, the days come. The days come. And that was that was uh I guess you would say almost three thousand years, more than twenty five hundred years ago, roughly from this present time. You know what I'm saying? Um Almost uh, 2,600 years ago. You could round it off if you want to 3,000, but almost 2,600 years ago. So at that time it says, The days come, saith Yahweh, that it shall no more be said, Yahai, Yahai, Jalib, Jalib, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, verse 15. But Yahai, Yahai, Jalib, Jalib, that brought up the Bane Yisrael, the Dekika Israel, the Yisraeli Joch, from the land of the north and from all the lands whither he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their land that I gave to their fathers that I gave to their fathers. So now, which fathers are we talking about? We're talking about um, Father Abraham. And in Orit the Fitret, known also as uh, Bereshit, you understand, or Bereshit, you understand, um, Genesis chapter 15, verse 18, it prescribes the borders and the boundaries, the Afro-Asian um East African, namely, Asian um, Arabia and that part of Asia included, borders of the land that was given to the seed, not seeds, but the seed of Abraham. And this is speaking about Yishak, you understand? Know and therefore speaking of Ya'ikol, and therefore Israel 
for the rulership, the authority, and the administration. This is one of the reasons why there's no peace in the Middle East, because the peacemakers are not there. It is clear. And if the peacemakers are there, they are, they are suppressing and oppressing and downpressing the peacemakers that are there. You understand? They are downpressing the peacemakers. It's the, the black Hebrews, both the African um, American, the Hebrew Israelites, the, the, the Ben-Ami community, and it's the, the Beta Israel and other black Hebrew communities mainly, you understand, were to, for example, um, have the unanimous, you understand, all these majority um, vote of Israel, you understand, as far as the leadership, I'm sure they will be able to work out a peace in that region that is more fair and equitable to all involved in the al Qidan. But that, that voice, the, the, the black Hebrew, the black Jewish voice is, uh, is, is oppressed. And therefore, hell, or what's likened to it, keeps manifesting. You understand? Know Abominations and desolation until the end of white supremacist rule, until the end of this, um, this, this ease. You understand? Know this, this ease. And we're not speaking about just men and people. We're speaking about a mentality. You understand? Know a worldview, if you please. You understand? Know a world, the times of the Gentiles, scripturally. Now, here is a very important area of scripture because it's saying that no longer would they say that Jah lived, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but they will say instead, they will say, Jah lived, Yahai, that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. What land of the north do you think that this, the prophetic word in Jeremiah chapter 16, verses 14 to 15, is speaking about? You understand? What land of the north? It's speaking about Judahite country. You understand? It's speaking about the so-called African-American Negroes. When we say the Negroes, the Ethiopian Hebrews amongst them, because there are some, there are mixed multitudes. There were other tribes that seed got mixed up with the people. This is the reason why in the family sometimes you'll have some who will get it and others who don't get it. You understand? Because they brought, predominant, this prophecy was fulfilled upon the Beta Israel. You understand? The prophecy of Deuteronomy chapter 28 was fulfilled among the Beta Israel. But other Africans, black peoples, you understand, from other tribes, other religions and gods, also got mixed up. So will we say that all black African Americans or Africans in the West are, are Hebrews? No, we would not say that. You understand? We, not say, we, we cannot honestly say that. You understand? Um, for many are called, few are chosen. So the word has to go out to the many. You understand? But it's those few that will choose to make their wills obedient to good influences, to the last will and testament of the King of Kings and his Christ. And that's the B-I-B-L-E, the basic instructions before liberating Ethiopia or before leaving the earth plane, the, the worldly or the mundane plane of existence, but liberating Ethiopia, that seems to fit this prophetic. But it's speaking here where it says, Neger Gen, according to the Met of Kedus of Negus Neges, it says, Neger Gen, Ye Israelin Le Jocha Kasamein Midar, Kasamein Midar, Ka Saradacha Wema Midar Hulu. Yawet a hiyao egeziabi herin, ye balal. In name, la bato chacho wa wode set a hoat, wode midracho, emela sachua lo, emela sachua lo. He will, he will return us. He says, I will return them. It is he who will return us as we turn our hearts and our wills to him. He now opens up the ways and the pathways. He brings us together. So the keeping, the remembrance of the Sabbath and the keeping of the Sabbath and the studies and the growing of the individual, each of us individually, and then as families or collective groups, one can call it tribes if they want to. This does not offend the, the word of truth. 
You understand? And this is where we was going to talk about earlier the my tote um, and the my say, how my tote and my say go together the 42nd and 43rd. And it's a very important lesson on, on tribes and, 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 and diversity. And unity, even with that diversity, is taught by another level of teaching on the 42nd and the 43rd Torah portions, the, 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 the Sendatawi Orit uh, Minbab, the Torah portion readings, which are called in the Hebrew uh, Matot, you understand, and Mase or Negadoch and Guzo, tribes and, and journey. And it teaches that there's a reason, you understand, that even as the Beta Israel, there are 12 houses or 12 families, there's 12 manners of people, there are, there are like you could say, 12 communities. Each one has certain, even cultural and, and certain things that are unique to them, you understand, in their own kind of cultural way. You understand, as a tribe, as a family, even as a nation. Remember, the 12 tribes of Israel are 12 nations. You understand, and they are 12 manners of people. So when we study tribes, it's important for us to keep that in mind. So it teaches us that there is a diversity, but there are many um, misled brothers, uh, Hebrew and, and black brothers out there who think that we have to, in a sense, um, kind of become the same thing, or even as Israelites, we all have to belong to the same camp, but there are 12 types of camps, you know, saying among the Beta Israel. So what we appeal for is the dialogue among the different types of black Hebrews, uh, speaking of the the, the Hebrew Israelites, who we have differences with, especially this generation. You understand the older generation recognized Ethiopia, recognized Ethiopian Hebrew as an identity, as a descriptor. The, many of the radicalized, um, you know, youths right now who are some of the extremist um, groups, or the more extreme fundamentalist groups of the black Hebrew Israelites, of course, they... They, 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 they blame Haile Selassie the first. They hate on his match. They hate on Ethiopia. They hate on Africa. They have a, they have a very wrong teaching regarding that. It contradicts um, generations of previous um, Black Hebrews in the Americas. So we have to ask them where did they get this teaching from? Seeing that their identity as Black Hebrews was sustained by previous generations that really had to um, 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 fight, you understand, really fight white supremacy more in the war just to even declare themselves as black Hebrews and black Jews. It, 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 no easy road. It wasn't an easy road. So anyway, there's a great diversity, and that's what the, the, the combined reading of Matot and Mase, Negadoch and Guzo, that's what it teaches on, unity with diversity. You understand? With a, 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 a Davidic monarchy at the core, with the monarchy, you understand? So, with those Rastafarians as well as Ethiopians who are speaking of the monarchy and restoring the monarchy, this Al Kidan encompasses monarchy as well. This is the real base for any true and future Davidic monarchy or monarchical system within the promised land, in particular the Horn of Africa and Ethiopia region. This is really the key to the restoration of the um, Davidic monarchy, you understand, which many Ethiopian monarchists, as well as many Rastafari and, and, and other peoples of goodwill um, desire. It's only the fools, the careless, the ignorant, the disobedient, the children, the sons and daughters of disobedience that that um, resist that or are just too ignorant. Perhaps they are ignorant and they need to become teachable so they, they can be taught and they can learn. So in the future time, we would no longer say that Jah lived, who brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but we will say that Jah lived, that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north, from North America. First and foremost, Judah right at the center, at the head, 
and from all the lands whither he had driven them. And all the other lands, and just say just a couple of islands over here, or just these people because they're darker skin over there, or these people not or because they're lighter skin. It didn't say that. It's from all the lands. By their fruits, yes, as Christo says, you will know them. By their fruits, learn to um, learn to uh, be uh, agriculturalists. Learn agriculture. Learn how to tell fruits and seasons and, 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 and the whole nine yards, as it said. And then one will be able to tell fresh fruits from swell fruit, good fruits, you understand, and recognize that uh, a, a good tree brings forth good fruit and, and a bad tree brings forth bad fruit. You understand? I mean, it's, it's basically as simple as that, but always with the advice and headresting with uh, Yahweh, where Mashihu with Yahweh and the Messiah. So this is speaking of us in this time, and we must recognize that it's him who brings us again. It is him that brings us again into the land that he gave to our forefathers, the very land that he gave to our ancestors. So even for the Beta Israel, it was seemingly many generations in coming. And hopefully... It's not many more generations in coming or being fulfilled. Hopefully we will do our parts and we will get to be like those who were able to enter in, like Joshua and Caleb and, and that younger generation that was able to enter in to the promised land and was able to receive it. So, brothers and sisters, the Shabbat has begun and once again, it's Debarim, Debarim, Debarim. Um, that, is the, that is the meaning um, for the season. That's the reading for the season. And in that reading, one will find, one will find the meaning. And that is Negaracho Kam, Yehinoah, Debarim, Debarim. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 1 to Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 22. Um, the prophetical reading is Isaiah chapter 1, verses 1, to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 27. Then Acts of the Apostles is chapter 9, verses 1 to verse 21. And First Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. So it's three-part reading from, from the entire seven seals. It is from the Torah, the Prophets. And then we have the Hadith Kidan, the Hadith Kidan. And also recall that it, there's also Psalms. There are prescribed Psalms for these, um, for these Sabbath days. I think we put that in the, um, in the, in, in the booklet as well, or we, made a, or we made a reference to those uh, daily Psalms. Well, look forward to the Psalms of David. Um, the Amharic Parallel Bible Psalms of David um, from yours truly. We have all the information that, is, that has been prepared in, in, in that document for this special time and this jubilee, this jubilee season of the printing, the first printing of the Metzhaf Kedus. And now we have the, the privilege to print it in this jubilee season, in this jubilee time. So we give thanks and praise. We say uh, Baruch, 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 Baruch. Blessings. Habitu. Ante Baruchne. You are blessed. Amen. Shalom. Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. When the mochi hitochi and atochi.